Good afternoon, and welcome to this Holy Mass at St. Gregory the Great. My name is Brian, and I will be your lector for this Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Leon, assisted by Deacon George, our Greg. Tickets for the uh, great dinner auction are now available online. Secure your spot for an unforgettable evening. Plus, we're on the hunt for auction items, donations, to make the auction a hit. Please pick up a tag from the gift tree located in the vestibule. Thank you. The Christmas gift show is fast approaching. We're on the lookout for volunteers to help place yard signs, deliver flyer, flyers, and set up our craft world land. See the bulletin for all the merry details. Please read the bulletin for important information on the Blessed Carlo Acutis exhibition, the fall food drive, donuts for donations, our school open house, upcoming pancake breakfast, and much more. The reading for today's liturgy are located at 1277, that's 1277, in the Gather Book. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome all those around you. Good evening, everyone. We gather this beautiful evening. We are very grateful that for the last several days and through tomorrow have the relic of blessed Carlo Acutis, 
a young 15-year-old, you've heard me speak of him, who died in 2006 and was beatified in uh, 2020. And we pray on his way to canonization as a, a saint. A remarkable young man, devoted to the Eucharist, devoted to Mary, from the moment of his first communion at the age of seven to the time of his death, went to daily Mass. And uh, we invite you after Mass to go to the gathering room to venerate his relics and to see the displays, which are printed off, if you will, from the website he created to catalog all of the Eucharistic miracles of the world. As we uh, remember, bless Carlo, we bring our needs, our intentions this day, and we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to come to the altar worthily and celebrate the sacred mysteries, we pause once again to acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On, this, on that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the, the hand of the Lord will rest upon this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I also know how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and have living in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. But it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. In our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. And the king said to him, my friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and his feet, cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. It's here that we come together as a community of believers to to worship God, to praise Him, to thank Him for our many blessings. It's here where we come to hear 
his holy word and to receive his body, his blood, his soul, and his divinity. So having just proclaimed the gospel, I want to ask you a question. Now maybe it's just me, I, I, I don't know, but I kind of found the king's reaction to that individual that wasn't dressed exactly right as being a bit harsh. I mean, he could have gone into his closet, the king I'm talking about, he could have gone into his closet and pulled out a sport coat and a tie and said, here, put this on so you're dressed appropriately. He didn't do that. If he really needed him to leave, he could have gone to him quietly and said, hey, look, you know, you're not dressed right, you need to out. He didn't do that. He bound his feet and his hands, and he had the attendants throw him out into the dark where there was wailing and grinding of teeth. Yet at the same time, he's still the king. So we don't condemn him, but we come to a fuller understanding because that's the nature of parables, is to reveal God and who he is. I think what we take away from this is kind of an understanding that we don't wake up one day be born, live our life, die, and go straight to heaven. That God has certain expectations of you and me that go beyond just existing. My youngest daughter, Danielle, and her husband, Jake, stood right here at the altar two weeks ago and offered to each other their nuptial vows, their promises to each other and they became husband and wife. That morning, I realized that the most important thing I could do was to get away from the house. And the reason was because all of the bridesmaids, the matrons of honor, the bride, the mother of the bride, were going to be at the house, getting their hair done, their makeup applied, and their nails polished. Not a place where I should be. So I came here. We celebrated Mass. After Mass, took a walk over to the cafe, had a little breakfast, drank a ton of coffee, and got home probably around noon. I was able to find some time to be able to sneak in, take a shower, trim my beard, and put on this traditional black tuxedo. And after I was finished, I stood in the mirror and I looked and I go, wow. Pretty good. Today, every one of us was invited to a banquet. And you all responded. You see, we come here not so much to eat rich, rich food and to sample the choicest wines, but to receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist and to receive his precious blood. That is a banquet, a sacrament, so powerful that it gives an abundance of grace to every one of us when we receive him worthily. And it's, it's a grace that is supposed to give life. You remember in John's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. In the first reading, we see that Isaiah talks about a banquet and rich blessings of sumptuous food and really fine wines. But we have to realize that many are invited, but not everyone gets to actually taste the good food and sip the good wine. That's what happened to the person who wasn't dressed properly. So I ask you, when we come to Mass, is how we dress important? I'm going to ask you to just kind of chew on that for yourself, 
I just want you to have the assurance that no one is going to bind you hand and feet and throw you out into the dark night where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. The truth is, think about this. Who was Jesus speaking to when he gave this parable? The chief priests and the elders, right? Who is more proud of the way they dress than the chief priests? They talk about their phylacteries and how wide they are and their tassels and how long they are, and they want everybody to see how well-dressed they are. So I think it's reasonable to think that Jesus' message was not one to convey a message about our outward dress, but rather our interior disposition. You know, many of those who are invited close their mind and their heart to the gospel. They reject the teachings of Jesus Christ and his church. Will they partake? So the question that bears asking is, how exactly are we dressed? And I'm not talking about what color dress you have. I'm not talking about what shirt you're wearing. I'm talking about inside. What is it that we're wearing? What we need to do is we need to ask ourselves some questions. Number one, do we practice the corporal works of mercy? Do we strive to live lives of holiness and virtue? Do we receive the sacraments? And do we believe the teaching of Jesus Christ? Do we answer the invitation to the banquet of the table of the Lord every single Sunday and holy day of obligation? My friends, to do this and do it well requires commitment, humility, and perseverance. And this is why it's so important that we understand that the sacrament of reconciliation is essential to our spiritual life. I understand that going and speaking about our failures, our weaknesses, and our sins to another person can be very difficult. I understand. But we've got to take a look at what the benefits of going to confession really are. In the first place, when we hear the words of absolution, we know that forgiveness has taken place, and it's not just forgiveness of one person to another, it's a divine forgiveness. God has forgiven us, and we know that. We have that assurance. The second thing is that as we become more and more aware of our weaknesses and our faults, we become less likely to repeat them, and we become better people. The third thing is that it places us back into a state of grace and allows us to worthily approach the altar and receive the Holy Eucharist. And the last thing it does is that it gives an abundance of grace that fortifies us so that we can go forward and fight the good fight. Each morning I with morning prayer, which is part of the liturgy of the hours, there's one particular psalm that we say every single morning. It's Psalm 95. I'm not going to do the whole psalm. I'm just going to do the last stanza, the last paragraph. They call it a strophe. It goes something like this. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn as your fathers did in the wilderness when they were at Meribah and Massah. They challenged me and they provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways, so I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Sounds eerily appropriate for our time, doesn't it? 
Let's not forget that God the Father sent Jesus. He sent him to lead us, to teach us, to heal us, and to die for us. He sent the Holy Spirit to sanctify us, to comfort us, and to lead us to the banquet. One day, every one of us will be standing before the judgment seat of Almighty God. What happens next will have an awful lot to do with how we're dressed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, not and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and it is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Bless Carlo Acutis, who is dressed in Nike sneakers, jeans, and a polo shirt. And the statue that we have obtained of him. But most importantly, his mind, heart, and soul was dressed from the age of seven, going to Mass every day on his own. And his parents were not practicing Catholics. He brought them back through his devotion. He was dressed by his daily prayer, the rosary. He was dressed by using his computer skills to create the first website to catalog all the Eucharistic miracles of the world. All of this in 15 years of life. He was dressed, and I believe ready, on that day the Lord called. We, pray, we are so dressed and ready, and we present to the Lord now our needs and intentions and once again ask for his help on our way. For the church, may she continue to go forth towards, the, uh, towards those in need of forgiveness, teaching them the truth of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all world leaders, may God direct their mind and hearts to work for peace and freedom for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people, may God grant us the courage to embrace his precious gift of life, even in the most difficult of circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of Israel and Palestine, may they receive the prayers of people throughout the world as they go through the terrible process of rebuilding their country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our <laughs> prayer. For members of the Synod of Solidarity that are meeting at this month, this month, may discuss, many discussions be led by the Holy Spirit so that 
Final decisions may allow all of us to walk in faith and become a more vibrant church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, may we recommit ourselves to attending Mass in person and to receiving the sacraments regularly and devoutly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, whom we pray for in a special way, uh, Eugenia M. August, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may they be granted the rewards and blessings of the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we offer the many needs, those spoken and all treasured in our hearts. Humbly we pray, please hear us and help us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The, lect the ushers will now uh, take up the collection and the gifts will be brought up by the Privetera family.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all of its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy o Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
and the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Gregory the Great, blessed Carlo Acutis, and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. divine teaching as we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other that same sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away these sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
all scorn and contempt, for I have kept your commandments, for your law is the object of my meditations. a uh, couple reminders. First of all, uh, Saturday the 21st of October is the Family of Parishes Potluck. Now it's not a fundraiser, it's not just an event of Good Shepherd, it's for all of the parish family, which Good Shepherd is inviting all of us, St. Pius, St. Greg's, and Good Shepherd to come together. And uh, they're making the chili and we're to bring a pot to share, a uh, dish to share. And so uh, we invite you to come. Everything was really due yesterday, reservations, but if you call first thing Monday, if you'd like to still come, please do so, so we can uh, be properly prepared. And That's the 21st of October, a week from today at 5.30. But, uh, you know, I'll be at it and I'll talk long enough so there'll be food left for you. And all my hot air will keep it warm, so don't worry. Uh, do, do come. Secondly, uh, 
Next weekend, we'll be selling the cash raffle tickets for the parish auction. You know, the parish auction is the, the largest fundraiser we have for the parish and the school. And we invite everybody to participate in some way, if it be by donating an item for the auction or, or bringing a gift card, or if it be purchasing a ticket or coming in person. So uh, those cash raffle tickets will be available next weekend. And we've been very blessed, really, since Wednesday to... Um, have uh, Dr. Bill Reichman and his wife Mary uh, here to uh, bring the relic of blessed Carlo Acutis along with the displays that Carlo himself designed and the website. They've been here all week really uh, with us and, and uh, they don't charge us anything. This is their ministry and uh, we, we thank you for bringing the beautiful relic to us today and throughout this week, and, and Dr. Bill's going to share a few words, and, and we welcome you to St. Greg's. Thank you. Thank you, Father, and thank you, Parish. This has just been absolutely phenomenal. Now, I'm hoping that um, Deacon Greg didn't change his homily because uh, I was going to work off of that, uh, but did you, everybody see it? You saw it, what happened today right here at this altar? Jesus Christ came down and changed that bread and wine into his body and blood for us, for us. Father's talking about this boy, blessed Carlo Acutis. Carlo Acutis devoted his entire life to the Eucharist and to the Blessed Mother. The Eucharist was his highway to heaven. He knew that if he could stay close to Jesus, he would make it to heaven. When on, on his deathbed, October 5th, 2006, he told his mother, he said, Mommy, I know I'm not going to get out of this alive because God gave me an alarm clock and I hear the bell ringing. But I want you to know, Mommy, when you have more children, you'll know I'm in heaven. Two days ago, his brother and sister were 13 years old. She had twins four years after Carlo died and she was 44 years old. What a miracle in itself. But as Deacon said, we need to be dressed for this banquet. When you come over to the gathering center, you'll see how beautifully dressed Carlo is in the beautiful statue that your parish now has of Blessed Carlo. You'll also see how he's dressed in, on, in his grave, in his coffin. We have both of them over there. He's dressed in his soccer uniform, something that he did for his life. He was a normal human being and was a normal student. He loved people. He loved everything he did, but the most importantly, he loved God. He loved Jesus in the Eucharist. Now, it's really great that we have that statue because the youth can look at him and say, hey, I can look like that. The youth are the church of tomorrow. Old people like myself, we're not going to be here. But we need the youth to take over for us. Follow in Carlo's footsteps. Use the Eucharist as your highway to heaven, and you'll get there. Carlo was beautifully dressed, as all of us are, as long as we stay close to Christ. Keep our hearts clean. Keep our minds clean and pray and then pray some more, and then pray again. Father said this morning, he told me this morning when he brought the relic over, he said he was sorry for the delay, but he had to pray the rosary with Carlo. Carlo talks to him all the time. He's been taking him home to the rectory with him because he loves Carlo, and Carlo loves us. Don't hesitate when you come to venerate the relic. Ask Carlo for anything. But be, be careful what you ask for. He's powerful, and he will answer your prayers if it's God's will. So thank you very much, and please take some time to come see this beautiful display of all the Eucharistic miracles of the world that Carlo did. He was only 13 and a half years old when he finished it. There's over 150 Eucharistic miracles that he was able to discover on the Internet. And then take a look at him and his uh, relic. Venerate him and ask him for your help, his help. Thank you very much. God bless.
We, we thank you, Doctor, for coming to our parish and for bringing this treasure to share with us and certainly know of our prayers for you and, and your wife, Mary, as you, you travel back home to Pittsburgh tomorrow. We thank you. And uh, I can't urge you enough to go. Uh, I do love Carlo Acutas deeply, and I do admire this teenage brother in Christ because I have learned so much from him. And now reading more of his writings, he was 15 when he passed away in 2006. I have a master's degree in theology. I have 110 credit hours on the graduate level, and I have to read, reread, re-reread what he wrote because it is so powerful and so detailed and, and deep. Uh, tremendous treasure to the church, and especially for our young church, our teenagers, a uh, sign of great hope that uh, you can live beautifully that life of faith. One of the many things I learned about Carlo is that he likes to talk. He talked an awful lot. He got in trouble for school for talking. So there's hope for me yet, you know, because I like to talk. <laughs> Do come to the gathering room after. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace and enjoy to serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. In every age, O oh God, you've called us to be your people, to be your church. In this time, we begin anew to discern the pathways that will lead us, your people, closer to you. Can we bless our journey as we proclaim your good news, celebrate your saving presence among us, serve others with charity and justice, and steward the world you've entrusted to our care. Send your spirit to lead and guide our Emmaus journey as we commit ourselves to the renewal of our church. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. in battle, we are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil.